and hello welcome back uh, so uh, yeah we are back doing uh, open foam okay so in the last video we were talking about uh, some introduction to Laplace in foam and of course we're gonna compare the various files and see what entries need to be put in to make a Laplace in foam work all right so uh, we talked about the meshing already uh, at least in the cavity case you use block mesh stick this one uses ANSYS to foam so that's a bit like snappy x mesh except it uses an ansys file instead of a what do you call it 3d uh, stl file to generate the mesh so though if you don't use ansys uh, it's really not too concerning you can always use the stl file uh, to build your geometry and that's a new snappy x mesh which uh, was already introduced in the open form intermediate uh, uh, video series Okay, so let's take a look at the, we already went through control dict, we went through the zero file and we went through the uh, transport properties file. Uh, we saw what the similarities and differences were. And uh, let's go to look at FV schemes. All right. Okay, so FV schemes. Oops, must be getting sleepy. All right. Um, yeah, so again, DDT schemes are very similar. Uh, gradient schemes, well, it looks like you need to introduce this thing called the gradient of T if you want to help it to solve a Laplacian form. Um, so, and then the divergence schemes here. Of course, in the turbulence model, there are a lot more. Um, but here, there's basically no turbulence model, uh, no divergence scheme as well. Uh, so, we can just leave it kind of empty. And then we have this thing called Laplacian schemes. Laplacian schemes uh, in the Laplacian form, we have this Laplacian dt and t, which is the Laplacian using uh, um, thermal diffusivity and temperature, and then we use a Gauss linear corrected. Okay, so this uh, these things will need to be changed, um, of course. Uh, we will probably need to add this entry in. And then, of course, we want to see what effect uh, this default folder has. Of course, on the interpolation scheme, is pretty much the same, and the S and grad ingredient schemes is essentially the same. So that's it. that's it for FE schemes. All right. So um, FE schemes, yeah, you should know already by now. It's uh, some inputs that we need to put in uh, for the solver to run. Some information we need to tell the solver. Okay, how do we solve the thing? Which scheme do we use? So these are what FV scheme and FV solution are about. So speaking of that, let's look into FV solution. All right. So Laplacian form is very very short. It only has one uh, solver entry, which is called T. Okay. So T has this solver called PCG. Uh, not really concerned about what that is right now. It just has this solver, this preconditioner, uh, this tolerance, and rel, rel tolerance or something. So at least this T entry with this uh, this uh, um, information should be inside this solver's uh, solver's entry. All right, with the curly brackets, semicolons, yada yada yada. And the other note difference want to uh, bring to your attention is that well we have simple we have a simple algorithm for solving instead of a piezo algorithm. So this is a semi-implicit uh, pressure link equation algorithm, um, which is very iterative in nature. One of the most basic uh, uh, or open form uh, or any CFD. Uh, Algorithms, one of the uh, most uh, uh, well known, well studied. Okay, and yeah, there are many good videos on it. And basically, we just have this uh, simple here, simple form, uh, simple uh, algorithm uh, here. So we just need to add in this T and this simple in order to make Laplacian form work on, let's say, this one. Okay, so um, yeah. Uh, why why are we running these files? I mean, why are we doing all this examination so that 
you know it's easier for us to learn when we have some form of reference point and uh, yeah we have studied uh, we should have studied turbulent flow before and this is just the difference between the, the turbulent flow and piezo foam solver and the Laplacian foam solver so you can see the Laplacian foam is pretty simple uh, in, in nature so I don't have to worry too much about complications conduction solving is very easy uh, compared to turbulent modeling turbulence modeling okay so yeah um, what is next okay so we want to also look at the all run file to just examine how this Laplacian form is run so this is again an ANSYS to FLOAM alright so it uh, runs this uh, on the flange dot ANSYS it's not answers it's ANSYS and it puts it at 0 0.001 and then now we start running Laplacian form it says uh, run application say get application and where does it get application from? it gets it from the control dict file and then it runs this uh, the rest is just post processing. You only need to run the Plasian form uh, to get your data. So let's see the data at 3 and VI the T. Okay, so this is the temperature field. Alright. Uh, yeah, so you have the gradient of uh, X, Y, and Z to probably help calculate some. Uh, either calculate some flux or well it is uh, good for post processing uh, vi 0.1 dot gradient so I just put the x here so this is a scalar field you can see it on the class here and um, these are all the uh, all the gradients okay so gradient uh, of the temperature it just uh, has something to do with the, the heat flux right as we saw from Fourier's law so of course without further ado we want to start uh, having at least a case on github on uh, how we can you know implement our own Laplacian form uh, uh, what do you call it our own Laplacian form uh, solver all right at least a heat transfer so I'm gonna go to github and make a new repository and in fact I'm gonna fast forward that whole process and we'll probably want to copy uh, some files over from snap the pipe flow snapping hex mesh that you know it was used in the other tutorial files okay and so I'm gonna name this uh, oh, open foam heat transfer I'm going to put a small cap so that's in fun tutorials or YouTube okay so tutorial files for open form heat transfer okay so I'm just going to initialize this repository with a meet with me and create it okay so I'm going to clone it uh, directly onto this uh, place uh, let's see if a git clone would work okay so this is uh, not an empty directory so I'll need to make a new directory so I do make directory uh, let's see Maybe I'll do it without the dot. Oh, sorry. Git clone. So it's going to make that file for me. So I don't use the dot. So I'm going to go to open form. Hit transfer YouTube. And it's expected there'll be a readme.md file here. And what do I want to copy over? Well, I want to copy over the thin pipe flow snappy X mesh that we are talking about and perhaps use a new geometry or we can even use the same geometry. Alright, so just for simplicity's sake. Okay, so we have a snappy pipe, snappy pipe potential foam, and turbulent piezo foam snappy pipe, piezo foam snappy pipe. Okay, for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to use the. Uh, 
Well, I'm going to use the turbulent piezoform snappy pipe because that was the latest and that was uh, the most simplified mesh. That okay, I want to clear this up. Uh, yeah, I want to use that. Well, it has lots of extra data that we don't really need. Uh, it's very useful. Okay, so um, let's copy CPAR and we want to get the file turbulent piezoform snappy pipe. And I want to copy it into open foam, hit transfer YouTube, and I'm going to put it there. Okay, so it's going to copy all the files over. It's going to take a while because uh, it's a big file, as you've seen it before. And I'm not going to clean it up uh, because I, I, I still want my data, right? So it's done surprisingly fast. Okay, so we have a turbulent piece of foam snappy pipe. And I want to do an all clean first because this is not relevant anymore. So all is done. So I want to rename it using the MV command. The MV is basically cutting and pasting. So uh, turbulent piece of foam snappy pipe. I want to put a snappy, okay, Laplacian, a snappy foam. And then I'll just put a pipe case. All right. And then it'll just be renamed as Laplacian Snappy Foam Pipe Case. So let's go to Laplacian Snappy Foam. And uh, what do we need to remove? Okay. Uh, let's see the zero. Oops. Clear this one out. Let's go to zero dot original. And okay, for now I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to remove all this. I'm going to leave it there. But basically, all these files are pretty redundant, right? Okay. But where there is some use to it, especially when it comes to, oops, especially when it comes to looking at the boundary field, we have these uh, boundary conditions. Okay. And then we'll try to make heat conduction going through a rod, a rod, and then we see the temperature profile over time. This transient heat conduction. All right, so uh, we want to copy a temperature file over. So let's see the zero, and then uh, yeah, we'll copy this address. So that's a good thing about having two windows out. Copy this address, and then we'll paste it here. So CP uh, AR. Uh, that's just my habit. I have this. And I'll use the T file and I'll put it here. And there we have a T file. All right. So we'll have these uh, fields. Okay. So we'll need to rename the patch. But we'll just, uh, yeah, might as well do it now. Okay. So what are the patches? Uh, well, a uh, simple way is to just copy and paste. And I'll write this in copy and paste this and I'm going to quit I'm going to go to T and I'm going to delete all of this because we don't really need that so it goes by a fixed value okay so okay so we have a top patch we have a wall and a bottom patch so, okay, so what's the top patch? Top patch is, let's say, the cool end. All right, so instead of a zero gradient, which represents uh, no heat flux, I'm going to change this into a fixed value because that's a cool end. Of course, we can do a, a zero gradient as well as to see how an adiabatic rod actually heats up. But uh, yeah, that, that we can do another time just for comparison and then we can see what the difference is okay so we can do a fixed value okay uh, then what else we, what do we want the value to be we want the value to be internal fuel so I'm just going to that will copy this thing over and then I'll do a semicolon here and what is the wall the wall there should be no heat flux through so that should be a zero gradient okay 
no heat flux. So the bottom patch, the type should be indeed a fixed value, but uh, we don't want this value because that's a velocity, right? Okay. Seems to be skipping. Oh, whatever. Okay, let me type from scratch. Okay, so four spaces, curly open, four spaces, curly closed, and I'm going to tap in. So, what's the type? I want a fixed value. Okay, that's the value. I don't want the internal field value, of course. I want a uniform. What the uniform value is maybe 600 Kelvin, 573 Kelvin, whichever. Right? So we're going to put 773. So that's about 500 degrees C. Okay, very hot rod is being heated by a flame, for example. So that's it for my T file. Nothing, nothing too fancy, nothing too new. If you have uh, already done our all open form tutorials, it should be pretty simple to you because it's been explained there already. So what what is next? Let's take a look at constant. Vi constant. Oops, sorry. Cd constant. Oh, Cd dot dot. Uh, go to constant. All right. So it will have a transport properties. Okay. So let's add in that. Uh, let's add in that to the DT. Okay, so we'll just add this in because it's just extra data, right? And we see what happens. 4e minus 5 or 5. Okay, so that's all we need to do in the transport properties. It'll give that a thermal diffusivity to work with. Uh, so in the next video, we'll stop for now and uh, we'll just commit these changes to GitHub. Okay, so git add dot git commit message uh, Laplacian form edit in progress. So it creates all this and git push. Excuse me. So yeah, I'm going to push all these changes to GitHub as usual. So probably in the next video, we we'll want to talk about, you know, editing some of the control dicks, files, everything, so that we can start running a Laplacian form. Okay. Um, and then we can show that, you know, we can just leave all the other entries in. It will not do very much. It will not give us very much of a problem. So, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, appreciate it. If, uh, yeah, if you like it, uh, to, to subscribe, to leave a like, to leave a comment if you have any questions or you like this video a lot. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys again in the next time. Bye-bye.